there is no more salvation uh, possible uh, according to the Bible, and that's what Christ took away. And, uh, and, and so it was quite a theft in that sense, and he took it right out from under their nose. And, and we would have to say, he, uh, in doing so, he was uh, really like the greatest thief imaginable, uh, who, who could steal the greatest treasure that um, was, was kept um, under, under guard in a palace, and, and the thief comes, and uh, everybody's watching, and, and yet it's still stolen, it's still taken away. And, and that's what Christ did at that time. Now here in Matthew 24, um, where it says, Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. And, and you have people say, well, you see, you see, no man knows the day or hour. Well, of course, that, that's, that's true. Uh, none of us know God's, God's timetable, but, or we did not know. Uh, in the past, God knew. God knew, and that's why it says in Acts chapter 1, if we go over there in Acts 1, in verse 7, it says, and he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own power, and that that's incorrect. I mean, that, that's what the King James translators translated, but where it says it is not for you, it should be, it's the genitive, it should be, it is not of you. It is not of man to know the times or the seasons. Who are we? We don't know anything. We don't know what a day may bring. We have no idea what tomorrow holds. And, and yeah, we're, are, are we going to know God's end time judgment program? Not a chance. But that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean God cannot reveal it. And, and so in Revelation 3, in Revelation 3, in verse 3 of Revelation 3, it says, Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief. And thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. You see, in the command of Matthew 24, watch, watch. And here it says, if you do not watch, then you will not know, um, as, as Christ comes as a thief, what hour he will come. In other words, the implication is, uh, readers of the Bible were um, were uh, obedient to the command to watch. That um, they they would receive further information, which would indicate the time of the Lord's coming. But if they were not obedient to the command to watch, and how do you watch for Christ's coming? Do we keep our heads pointed up to the sky? No, we read the Bible. We study the Bible. We're open like a Berean, willing uh, to search something out to see if it's so, which is a positive mindset. Um, and, and as say the Lord gave information, Mr. Camping concerning the biblical calendar of history and and projected out into our time of judgment and on the church and the world and so forth. You have to be as a Berean at that point, watching. And here comes information, and, and you have to um, honestly check it out without having any preconceived ideas like, well, this is wrong. I'm going to search the Bible to find how it's wrong. That's not a Berean. A Berean searches to see if it's so. But, but here the implication is, if you watch, you will know the day and hour. In other words, Christ will not come as a thief. And just one more verse in 1 Thessalonians 5, um, the churches do not often point this out, 
Uh, sometimes some pastors do not point this out at all to the congregation. They say, well, Christ is coming as a thief in the night. No man knows the day or hour. And, and yet, what does the Bible say? What does God say in verse 2 of 1 Thessalonians 5? For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye brethren are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. In other words, Christ is not coming as a thief in the night for his elect people because they're not in darkness. Darkness um, in the Bible is tied to understanding. Uh, the, uh, you can read Ephesians 4, 17 and 18. The people of the world have ignorance of mind. A darkened understanding is what it means to, to be unsaved, to be spiritually dead. You, you can hear the truth and not understand the truth. But God's people are not in darkness. They, they have an enlightened understanding. I said uh, that was the last verse, but um, th this would go along with what I'm saying. So I'll turn there. Ephesians 1, verse 18. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And so the truly saved child of God hears these things, and, and he, because he is a child of God, he has ears to hear, and he has a certain mindset that opens him to the truth. He's willing to receive it. He's not afraid of it um, uh, either. It doesn't frighten him concerning the end of the world because he has the safety and security of salvation. Uh, and, and, and so he um, honestly checks it out, and the eyes of his understanding are enlightened, and he comes to know the information is from God. It is the truth, I believe it, uh, and so forth, and, and we're not in darkness, whereas the rest are in darkness, and just think of the ten virgins. What was the cry they heard? The bridegroom cometh. It had to do with Christ coming at the end of the world. And, and they awake, and they, they pull out their lamps, and they go to light the lamp. The wise have oil to light the lamp. So, the, the, you know, it's obvious. They can see eyes of understanding enlightened. The foolish virgins have lamps because every, you know, all the professed Christians out there pretty much have access to the Bibles, and, and the lamp identifies with the Bible. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. They go to light their lamp, but they run out of oil. No Holy Spirit, which leaves them in the dark and, and dark in understanding. They cannot get it. They cannot get it. And, uh, and that's really what it comes down to, as Daniel 12 tells us, seal up the words till the time of the end, and the, uh, none of the wicked will understand, but the wise will understand. And, and so we do. So we do. We, and, and thank God, you know, thank God that uh, we do have understanding uh, that, that God has been working, and, and he has been following a very um, precise timetable of events, and, and he started with the church 23 full years, 8,400 days, and transitioned to the world, and, and we can see how it fits into the biblical timetable, the biblical calendar of history. We have precedent for these things, and and we even with the first coming of Christ, the uh, his lifespan matches identically 
with the second coming of Christ, beginning in the Jubilee year of 1994, the official judgment on the church. And, and it comforts us. It comforts us. If we didn't have this information, if um, the world had uh, gone mad like it has, and, and we were in darkness, we didn't know what was going on. Oh, we, we would be very troubled, very troubled of mind. And, and yet the Lord says in 1 Thessalonians 4, in the passage, uh, we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord. At the last verse, wherefore, comfort one another with these words. And so it's very comforting to the child of God, again, because we don't fear. We, we don't fear our physical death. We don't fear the death. Um, of the end of the world, um, and, and it's not death to us, is why, as Christ said, that he who believes in me will never die, and the end of the world is not the end of the world to us. It's the beginning of a new world, an eternal world, and, and, and so uh, if our earthly house of this tabernacle is destroyed, we have a house um, uh, made in made in heaven without hands. It, it's a the house that God has built. 